Hi, this is Marcia. And this is Kelly. We are the two U's of Two U's Fiber Adventures. Thanks for stopping by. You'll hear about knitting, spinning, dyeing, crocheting, and just about anything else we can think of as a way to play with string. We blog and post show notes at two U's fiberadventures.com and we invite you to join our two use fiber adventures group on Ravelry. I'm 100 projects and I am better in motion. We're both on Instagram and Ravelry and we look forward to meeting you there. Enjoy, Enjoy the, the episode. episode. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Marsha. Not quite as early, um, now as when we first started talking on the phone. I know, really. <laughs> Marsha and I haven't seen each other in a while, so uh, so we had lots to talk about. <laughs> yes, we have a lot to talk about. We last saw each other at the Black Sheep Gathering. And then, um, well, we'll talk all about it. Yeah, um, and well, and, and I've missed podcasting, too, because we, um, because of the Black Sheep Gathering, we got behind another episode. Yes. Well, so you call it behind, but we, we had a little break. Yeah. Well, you, after the black sheep gathering, you and Robert took the trailer back to Bend, Oregon, mm -hmm. um, cause you had a punch list that you wanted the, um, the flight camp that did the restoration to take care of. So you were there for five nights, I think it yeah. was. Mm -hmm. And we had talked about sort of what our plan was, uh, we would record, while you were waiting for the trailer to re be, um, um, well, worked on, the work to be completed. Um, but you said it, it was just too hard with the dogs in the hotel room and um, yeah. too much going on. So, yeah, um, mm -hmm. which makes sense. But anyway. Well, and so, it was fun, too. I mean, we had, we did, we did stuff while we were in Bend. Not a lot of stuff, yeah. but we did some yeah. things. So. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. So well, it's been a it's been a while. So let's talk about what we've been doing. Yes. Well, first of all, we have to start when you you drove up, and I don't think we talked about well because we, we didn't record, but we did talk. I think before you left that you had booked two nights through Harvest Host. Mm -hmm. So you had one night at um, the rice farm. Yeah. <laughs> and um and then the second that was in uh Northern California, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the second night, which this sounded really fun, uh is you're at a winery in uh near Medford, right? Oregon. Yeah, it was yeah, it was just out just off the freeway in Medford, not far off the freeway at all. Mm -hmm. So that was really nice. Um Eden Vale Winery. Mm -hmm. And that was it was beautiful and it had it had great wine and it was warm, but had lots of shade and green grass, which we don't have in California. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it was it was really fun. Both places were were great um, from the standpoint of the the rice farm is at exactly the right place to stop, but mm -hmm. there's really nothing there, mm -hmm. and. And I was afraid it was going to be just way too warm mm -hmm. because it was hot. But, you know, we had we had shade and it was nice and breezy. It actually got a little bit too windy that night. But but now that we know that, we kind of have a better idea if we ever stay there again of where we should park instead mm -hmm. of where we did park. So anyway, yeah, our, I'm 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 a fan of Harvest Host. We also stopped. We also used it on our way home. We were going to try, there's a place in Weed, a brewery. Mm -hmm. and, but they didn't have any availability because the night we were, the day we were going, you know, where we, when we would have stopped in, in Weed uh, at the brewery was a Saturday night right before the 4th of July. And they actually didn't have availability for that night. And I don't know if that's because, um, you know, they had some event going on mm -hmm. or if they just had too many other people who were staying. But we did pop off the freeway on the way home and check it out. Um, and, you know, just to kind of see, okay, where, what, what does it look like? How close it is to the highway? Mm -hmm. What's around it so that we can maybe take advantage of it, um, you know, take advantage of it another time. So it, it, 
but then we stayed at um, another another winery uh, in Lodi. Okay. Right before we got home, and that was fun too. So I just I'm I'm thinking that this is a really good a really good thing. Although I have to tell you that um, you know you buy membership and then staying there is free. Yeah, it's not really free. It's not really because I know because I know what you're going to say. <laughs> We spent a lot of money on wine. <laughs> yes, you guys bought, didn't you buy the winery in Oregon? You bought a case of wine, right? Robert bought, yeah, he he liked, there was one of them that he liked uh, so well that he actually bought a case of it. So. <laughs> and, and then now, the one you- in Lo- Lodi, we bought a couple of, uh, he bought a couple of bottles of bubbly oh, yeah. and a couple of bottles of something else. Yeah, so, uh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so they're not exactly free. No. Um, <laughs> that's so funny. Well, let's um, do you want? Let's talk about the. We usually go right into projects, but let's talk since we were talking about this trip and about black sheep. Let's talk about black sheep and what we did. And yeah, how much fun we had. That sounds good. Yeah, we arrived early. Um, mm-hmm. We we actually spent I think five nights at the. Um, Lynn County Expo uh, grounds because we arrived on, I want to say we arrived on Wednesday. I think, yeah, we arrived on Wednesday and Mm -hmm. the black sheep gathering really didn't start until Friday. Thursday was like loading in day for all the livestock Mm -hmm. um, and the vendors and stuff. Um, uh, There were some people there on Wednesday. I mean, we weren't the only ones by far, but. But it was nice. I I don't know. I, I think I've said this before. I think there's something really kind of magical about being on fairgrounds or any place like that where the action isn't happening, you mm-hmm. know, when you're in the off time. Mm-hmm. Like being on um, when we had the, uh, when we did the s- sleepover at the baseball stadium. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, that was just really cool. And when I used to do dog shows, being on showgrounds after the show was over or, you know, at night between the two days of shows, mm-hmm. I just always really liked wandering around on the grounds when there was nobody there. Yeah. Yeah. It, it kind of reminds me, you probably, you probably read Charlotte's web, right? Mm hmm. Yes. I think maybe this is why I like it because in that book, when Wilbur goes to the fair, mm-hmm. and then you have this peak of all the animals at the fair after all the people go home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think that's what started. I think that's what started this uh, sort of um, love of mine of being places where you shouldn't be after hours. You know. <laughs> so, and then. What was the other one? The mixed up files of Mrs. Basley Frankweiler where where the kids are in the it's, I think it's oh, a mu- li- library? No, I think they're in the um the museum, aren't they? In the um I think that's a different book where they're in the Natural oh. History Museum. Yeah, there's one where they're in a museum. And what is that book? Oh, that one was made one into a movie, I think. Yeah, cuz they s- s- Yeah. Well, people are now are are telling us now. I can I I can just imagine myself when I listen to a podcast and someone's they're, trying to think of something and I'm I'm walking the or they're dogs yelling at they're like, yelling at it's us. It's this. It's this. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're cleaning your toilet or uh, walking the dog, you're now yeah. yelling at us what the name of that, of that book or is. you're in your car commuting and to and you're yelling at mm-hmm, the. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, and when I had my my office. Um, when I, I had that office in the library at Hartnell for a while because I was doing grant work. And so the guy who was managing the grants wanted me to have a grant work office. Mm-hmm. And so he he um, assigned me an office in the library. And I always liked being in that office when the library was closed. It's like, <laughs> okay, I can go, I can go out of my office into the li- into the closed library and wander around if I want, you know. <laughs> So anyway, but um, then you guys arrived on Thursday, right? Thursday night, you and mm-hmm. Kim. And yeah, we arrived Thursday, yeah. And we had dinner at the trailer, which was really nice. 
it was warm. It wasn't as warm as it got, but it was it was warm. We had dinner that night in the trailer mm-hmm. in uh, Manhattan's. Robert made Manhattan's. Made Manhattan's, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Robert's specialty. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we and then we went the next morning. We got we got out into the uh, into the show fairly quickly, right? We went looked at the uh, fleece judging at about I don't know. I think it opened at like nine or ten, and we went over there mm-hmm. and, right at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was really hard to hear. Yeah, they were having. Um, what do they call? Is that the lavalier? What is the mic? That yeah, you wear? the lavalier was not working, wasn't working, and mm-hmm. so it was. Um, Judith McKenzie was the judge, and she. They were making do as best they could. They had a another. Um, someone was holding a handheld mic, uh, but it was not working. It was. <laughs> You couldn't hear a thing. Yeah. So I, was, and I think they got that fixed later on. Because mm-hmm, um, I did go by a little bit later that day. And, um, and and yeah, she had she had a lavalier mic. So they were able to get a, a mic that was working. Probably it didn't have a battery or something. That's a lot of times mm-hmm. what happens. Yeah. So, um, so we watched a little bit of the fleece judging. But this was the first year in a long time that I haven't spent most of my time watching the fleece judging. And Mm -hmm. I think I did it. Part of the reason I did that was because, um, I, I had, I had told myself I was only buying one fleece Mm -hmm. and I knew if I watched the judging, you know, that, (laughs) that would have made me want to buy, buy more than one fleece. Well, I, um, before I left, I looked at the fleeces that I have, mm, which mm-hmm. was really good because I thought I don't need to buy another fleece because I have a few. I will not it, say how many. <laughs> um, eight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I thought I, I'm really glad I did because I, I went down there and I thought I cannot buy another fleece. Yeah. It's, it's a crime to buy a fleece and then have it just sit in the closet and not do something with it. Mm-hmm. It has to be used. So, yeah. um, but, but we did, we did make sure that fleeces were purchased because yes, we, yes, <laughs> we were, <laughs> we were in the fleece sale, um, separate from the show when we, realized we couldn't really hear what was happening we walked over to see what was for sale that wasn't part of the show and there was a nice i think it was a cvm fleece Mm -hmm. a nice cvm fleece that we were looking at and this other woman comes up to it and uh, we're like oh yeah isn't this nice oh Mm -hmm. this is so nice and she's like oh man i was only gonna buy i'm only gonna buy one and I said, well, you know, I, I told myself that, but if it's an emergency, I can <laughs> buy <it> two. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so then, so then I said, okay, I think I have to walk away from this. And I walked away and she walked away. And then as Marsha and I were leaving, we saw she had grabbed the fleece and brought it yeah. to the register. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She couldn't resist. Well, I have to say I was walking around and I, uh, I had to fight that feeling all the time of, Oh, that feeling of wanting to buy mm-hmm. something because they're so beautiful, you know, and I, yeah. um, uh, and there's so much potential, you know, I think when you see yes. these things, you have all these ideas about wouldn't that be fun to process that? Wouldn't that be fun to spin that? Mm-hmm. And, and, it's um, like seed packets, mm-hmm. only there's bigger. So much potential. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so much potential. Anyway. Um, yeah. But, um, what else then? We, so that was really fun. And then we also, we walked around the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Um, we did that in two days. I think we kind yeah. of took our time. Well, um, and you knew something that you were interested in, right? That you wanted the blending board. Yes, I wanted a blending board. And so we looked at all of them. And the one I ended up buying, I, I put a link in the show notes. It's from Celestial Farms. And I don't have his card here in front of me, but... Um, uh, he has an Etsy shop. He's actually a farmer. Uh, and then on the Etsy shop, they sell the blending boards, um, beautiful wood. Um, and they also sell soaps and beard, uh, like beard bar. I don't know, not oils or something, you know, for Oh, your, yeah. Uh, Robert has that. For men's beard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, well, I made uh, him some with, with some of the beeswax. And then okay. he also has some that he got as a gift from mm-hmm. someone else. So beard I looked wax at all the, or something. Yeah, beard wax and um, all kinds of soaps and grooming products and um, 
jewelry um, and things are on the Etsy site. But anyway, Kelly, you and I, we looked at a lot of the blending boards Mm -hmm. and some were very expensive. Um, I always thought it was pronounced Clems and Clems. It's actually Clemus and Clemus, I found Mm -hmm. out. Um, Theirs were, I mean, how much were those? I don't remember. Expensive. Don't o- remember over either. five hundred dollars, I think. Mm-hmm. Very pricey. And they have a one of the reasons that their carders and their blending boards are pricey is that they have a specialized type of pin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um but like the the angle that the end is cut on or how the how the very end of the of the pin is manufactured. Uh, is different in some way. And I, mm. I can't remember how it's different, if it's filed or I don't know. Mm. It's it's different in some way the end. It's not just cut off. Oh, okay. You know, it's not just cut off flat. And so it's supposed to um, be especially good for different kinds of fleeces. And they mm-hmm. have a lot of information on their website about, about why their carding cloth um, is superior. And, and, mm-hmm. and I'm sure it is. Um, and, but it's also, it's also pricey. So, yeah, yeah. And they're also using very, uh, interesting woods too. Mm-hmm, they're not mm-hmm. just, you know, it's not just plywood or something. Right. Or I, I'll put a link in here. <clears throat> um, I put it in the Ravelry, but <clears throat> I'll put it in the show notes too. Uh, a woman does a, a demonstration about, <clears throat> excuse me, how to make your own blending board. And you can buy the cloth online. And then she just went to Target and bought a, um, a wooden um, cutting board. Oh, right. And I think glued it on or stapled it on there. So there are ways to make, um, I'll just tell you that my blending board was $180, which was significantly less than the other ones that were for sale. Yeah. Um, Even the Ashford. Yeah. Which is usually yeah. kind of, you know, the Ashfords are kind of like the, the uh, you know, best value a lot of times mm-hmm. with yeah. equi- in equipment. Um, but, uh, online, the, this video that I'll find it and I'll post in the show notes, um, she said it's about a hundred dollars to buy. It sounds like probably the most expensive part is the cloth. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so, and you maybe could make it even for less money than that. But anyway, um, so I'll, I'll talk about that in my projects, what I've been doing with the blending board, but nice. that's what I bought. And, um, I'm trying to think what else I bought. Well, you did get one of the eight ounce braids, right, from Eugene Textile Center. I bought two. Okay, um, yeah. And that was the other thing too. Is I thought I don't really need braids, but it's like, how can you go to a fiber sh- show like oh, and not <laughs> buy some fiber? I mean, so I I had found because well, we'll do you want to talk about your your doing? Or we'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. What we bought mm-hmm. there, but um, we um, then I would say I took a class. Um, on Friday afternoon, I oh, took a class right. mm-hmm. on stranded color work, and it was a good class. Um, my takeaway is that, and, and the reason why I took this class is, as everybody knows, I've been having some problems with my color work, and so I thought maybe I learned some techniques and tips. And the truth is, I didn't learn anything new in terms of how to knit color work. It's all the stuff I've been told or I've seen on YouTube videos. What I really came away with is I just need to spend more time knitting color work. And what I need to do is, is um, try doing color work with different yarn that I'm using. So um, that sweater that I'm making for my brother, I think it's, um, I say, I say it's a sticky yarn, you know, it's very, um, Mm -hmm. and it's bulky. Um, And I think what I need to do is practice like making a cowl or a hat or something yeah. with a lighter weight yarn than that is what I, and so um, I said to everybody, it reminded me when I took skiing lessons and the instructor said to me, well, you basically, you have all the tools you need to become a proficient skier. You now just need time on the mountain. Yeah. And I think that's the same thing with the color work is I, I didn't learn anything new in terms of the color work other than I just need to spend more time doing it. And then the other thing I learned, and we were all laughing about this because this was the price of the class. <laughs> yes. You know what I'm going to say, Kelly. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when I do um, any kind of charted patterns, um, I always take a post-it to mark where I what row I'm on. And I always put it the post-it below the 
row I'm working on. And in class, she said, well, if you put it above the row you're working on, then you can see the rows that you've just completed to kind of give you another sense of where you are on the pattern. Yes. So and like I, you do, so you can see that, oh, in the stitch before mm-hmm. where last row I did a yarn over, now I'm going to mm-hmm. do, now I'm going to do the yarn over one stitch over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Now, <laughs> people are now yelling at us like, well, we all know that. That's not new. But, I, I, and the, the thing that's so absurd about this is I always with the post-it note, as I say, below the row I'm working on, and I always have to take it off and look underneath it to see, <laughs> like to check, like how ridiculous. <laughs> so, so, well, it's, it's so silly. Funny so because silly. you you asked that we had um, we met up with a few people. Mm-hmm. Um, Kelly was there, and Dagmar, and Marianne, and Monica, um, and we you know we had a chance to visit with them, which is really fun. Um, but while there was a group of us there, you asked, you know, where do you put your post-it? Mm, yes. And you weren't the only one who put your post-it below the working row. Yeah. So. Yeah, a lot of, I mean, it's like 50-50. Uh, yeah, it, w- it was kind of funny to, to see. And yeah. um, because I've always put it above my working row because I need to see. That was whole, the whole point of charts. I, know. Is I needed and to I, see what was happening and below. I ne- and Kelly. This is <laughs> this is so ridiculous. I need to see too, but I always put it. <laughs> well, we're so oh habituated. Really, I we're know. so habituated to like underlining and you know, when you're taught to read, you put your bookmark underneath the row of words that you're reading mm-hmm. and I mean, I think we're really habituated to do that in 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 so many ways. You know that, yeah. Because most of the yeah. time we're going down, right? Yeah. No, I, this is just. And it's, when you it's knit, so you go up. I, yeah. I, yes. It's so <laughs> I still, I just chuckle. It's so funny that, and the instructor, when I said to her, like, I really kind of felt like mind blowing, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and she, and she was sort of like. Okay, okay, whatever, you know, like, like, you're weird, but okay. But really, seriously, I was like, it's once I once I've seen it, I can't unsee it. Like, I yeah. really am just my it, it, it's so crazy that I was constantly having to lift up that post note to see what I had just done. And I was such a simple thing, just turn it over and put it. <laughs> anyway, um, it was a good class. And I think and she was a very good teacher and very well organized. I will say one thing about Black Sheep Gathering is um, uh, they never sent me an email saying that you're supposed to bring yarn and you had to do homework before you, so we could all start at the same place. And uh, it was a, they, she had designed a cowl and you're supposed to cast on and knit a certain number of rows before you started the color work. Mm-hmm. And um I, I don't know why I didn't get the email, and I and I was not alone. Half the class got the email, yeah. and half the class didn't get the email. I think so getting something, started back up after having two probably, years yeah. of not doing it, you know, ha- of not having the the face to face gathering. I think, yeah, maybe there were and, some some glitches. And I think too, I don't know, but I I suspect it always feels to me the black sheep gathering is a more um, it's a volunteer based mm-hmm. group, unlike perhaps, you know, stitches. Right. right. You know, where they have the resources to, uh, the, to put into yeah. uh, uh, a system. Um, right. And Black Sheep doesn't have that, you know. Yeah. I had a and great I would- time. You know, I played catch up, but I still, my big takeaway was the post it note. And right. then also learning that I really do know what I'm doing. I just need to spend, um, I need to practice more on it. Right. It's not norm. about some magical tip. <laughs> no, no, no. It's about it's time on task. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing I just wanted to mention. Remember when you were talking about your sweater? Um, and I know you don't want to talk about your sweater, but the, your brother's sweater. But remember when you were doing the sleeves and mm-hmm. you discovered that you needed that sort of base Mm-hmm. layer you know you needed a mm-hmm. certain number of rows of right. regular knitting before you could start the color work um that's kind of what she had you do as homework was 
that right. base layer of knitting that then you can mm-hmm. start the color work on top of. So that's mm-hmm. an interesting, that's another one of those mind, blo- you know, mind blowing tips mm-hmm. is you, you can't just cast on and start color work. Yeah. You need yeah. something, you need something yeah. for it to be mm-hmm. stabilized with or something. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I thought that was interesting that, that when you mentioned that, and then we had just talked in the episode before about the sleeves and how you needed that inch or yeah, half yeah, inch of, yeah. of regular knitting to, to yeah. kind of stabilize your color work. Yeah. So anyway, um, but let's, um, but you bought some more, I, cause I just bought the, well, I, you were had a braid, the Huckleberry braid that you were spinning on. Mm-hmm. So you wanted to buy another braid and at the, Eugene textile mill, you bought a braid. Yeah. So, um, that want- is a re- was really nice. Um, and I, I actually have spun it. I spun it during the trip and I, it's an eight ounce braid and I've spun four ounces because I did decide I was going to, first I was going to do a three ply, but I wasn't careful about separating the huckleberry, um, mm-hmm. knits fiber. And so I have a big bobbin and a small bobbin of that. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't figure out how I was going to make three equal, you know, two from the Huckleberry, one from the Mm -hmm. Eugene Textiles braid. So I just decided to do a two ply. So I spun four ounces of the Eugene Textiles braid and I actually have plied it with Mm -hmm. the Huckleberry knits and I've got a skein. I'll get more than this skein out of it. I have to do a little bit more uh, spinning of the Eugene textiles braid so that I have enough to ply with the rest of the one from Huckleberry knits. Mm -hmm. Um, They didn't come out exactly the same. I think it'll end up being well, because it has more silk. um, It's going to take more than four ounces to, to, um, to match it up, but it's gorgeous. I I'm really loving it. And the, the stuff from Eugene Textiles, it's not on their website right now, but it might be. They they sold out, basically. There was mm-hmm. only one braid left when I when I went on Sunday to check it out. But it's 70% merino and 30% silk, which mm-hmm. is a high silk content. Mm-hmm. And and I was loving spinning it, but I realized as I was spinning it, it actually is kind of difficult to spin. I mean, oh. it's not a super easy spin, um, you know, like a mindless. Mm-hmm. It's not a mindless spin because the silk is so long. Oh, okay. And so um, when you go to spin it, you'll just want to – I I did do a little bit of pre-drafting. Not a, not a ton, but I did a little bit of pre-drafting with it. Um, it feels like it's stuck. Like it feels oh, like okay. it's matted, but it's not. It's just that the silk is so long. Okay. So when you're trying to pull it apart, your hands aren't quite far enough apart. Even mm-hmm. though it seems like merino, you wouldn't need your hands to be that far apart. But because mm-hmm. the silk is so long, it's harder okay. to to pre-draft. Okay. Um, and then when you're spinning it too, the the silk because it's so long will sometimes run. Your twist will sometimes run if you're not careful about keeping the twist out of your drafted fiber you know your drafting hand which i'm not i often will spin with the twist letting the twist into my fiber Mm -hmm. and if you do that it runs down it'll run down quite far into your drafted fiber okay Um, so you do have to be a little bit if, if you find yourself having a little trouble spinning it it's not you okay it just it's not you know because of the high silk content it's a little trickier not okay. not terrible, but just a little. You'll find it a little trick. You have to pay a little bit more attention then. Okay, because I y- yours was so beautiful. I bought uh, an eight ounce braid also of the merino silk, and I mine is like um, oh like a silvery blue, and it's all shades of blue, mm-hmm. kind of periwinkle and blue, and aqua, and then I bought a braid of a Corydale cross also eight ounces which is also that same kind of periwinkle blue but then a little bit of green and Mm -hmm. and even a little bit i'm looking at this a little bit of like gold in there too so i was actually thinking of just like what you're doing a two ply like you're doing two ply together um so i'd have 16 ounces um but that's good to know about the silk 
but I think well, anyway, I'll talk when I I'll talk more about that when I talk about projects. But uh, um, yeah, my but anyway mine is really pretty. The first braid from Huckleberry was it had brown and it had some brown in it and some blue in it, but it really was mostly sort of pinks and purples mm-hmm. with some blue and some brown and some gold. Mm-hmm. When it would go from the when it would go from the um, Let's see. Well, when it would go from the pink. Well, no, I think there was actual gold in there. I can't remember now exactly. But then the one I bought from the Eugene Textiles is bl- was blues and greens and brown. And they just went together really nicely. And now I have a skein that looks a lot of brown and purple. I think I'm glad I didn't do a three-ply because I think it would have started to look a little muddy. Mm-hmm. Right. The more colors you put together, the more different right. colors you put together, the more muddy it is. But anyway, I'm really, I'm really happy with this skein. I'm excited to wash it. I sent you a picture of that, and that you'll put in the show notes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's before it's been washed. I just took it mm-hmm. off the took it off the uh, spinning wheel last night. Yeah. So really, so pretty. yeah, yeah. That was a bit. That was a great win. A great find. Um, so one of the things that I was purposely looking for um, a- in the marketplace, something I wasn't looking for in the marking pl- marketplace was a sweater. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> we walked into a booth and she had vintage sweaters and there was a, a sort of a cream colored, you know, natural color wool, white wool sweater that had all these, uh, all these blue embroidered flowers all over it. Mm -hmm. and kind of cruel embroidery and i just i just fell in love it was an impulse instant instant love instant buy like oh Mm -hmm. this is my sweater i need to buy it (laughs) yes (laughs) you're like oh thank you for having uh, finding my sweater for me and it was uh, really early i mean we basically had almost just walked into the marketplace Mm -hmm. and i uh, yeah made my first purchase purchase of this of this well and uh, uh, the booth. I uh, I don't think they're going to do this anymore. I think they're closing their company. But they, um, what they do is they would just when they go to vintage stores and find hand knit sweaters or not necessarily hand knit, but just interesting sweaters. Mm-hmm. Because Kim, who went with us, drove down with me. She bought a sweater from LL Bean, like those. Uh, it was wool. Like those Norwegian machine knit Norwegian yeah. sweaters, like heavy, a ski you know, sweater, yeah, a ski sweater that zipped and um, it's like magenta and hot pink and white. I mean, interesting colors. And mm-hmm. um, so, what they the these women would do, they every time they'd find an interesting wool sweater, mostly hand knit, but if not hand knit, just you know something nice, they would um, buy them and clean them up and sell them. So, um, and yours is darling. Um, yeah, I and love this, it. The the sweater itself is hand knit too, isn't it, or is it machine knit? It's machine knit. Yeah. Okay. It, she, what she said was that it, if it says hand knit, hand loomed is mm-hmm. often what they'll say, and yeah. it's like a knitting loom or a knitting machine. Mm-hmm. Is that's yeah. like a knitting machine? So a a knitting machine that you well, like the knitting machines that people have that I find so fascinating where yeah, you actually yeah. do the movements to make each mm-hmm. row. Right. 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 Um, it's not a machine that you plug in and turn on and walk away from. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, that was, a, that was great. I was so excited about that sweater. It was perfect. And then I, um, I bought a flick carter at the same place where you bought your blending board. I did end mm-hmm. up getting a flick carter. And then the other thing that I did that I had p- planned on doing was I went to the Duncan booth where they had the the uh, carters and talked to them about my drum carter because it's, you know, it's 20-ish years old. And I bought it from them the first time I had gone to the Black Sheep Gathering. And, yeah, so I'm, it's probably more than 20 years old, probably 20 two years old anyway doesn't mm-hmm. matter how old my carter is <laughs> it needs some adjustment and mm-hmm. i had been talking to to mary knit admin at the uh, knockers retreat where i brought my carter and i said you know i know it's not supposed to make this 
meshing teeth noise, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm afraid to adjust it. And she said, oh, you know, you could just bring it to Black Sheep and they'd probably adjust it for you or get instructions. And so I didn't bring it, but I did stop at their booth and talk to them and and got very detailed instructions about what I need to do to adjust it. So mm -hmm. I feel confident that that I can make the adjustment without having everything fall apart. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so okay. I don't have to, it, in fact, you don't really have to take things apart. You just loosen things and then mm. and then make the adjustment and then tighten them back up. So, okay. so I'm excited to do that and have a drum carter that makes a little less noise. Because mm -hmm. I've known for a while that it's out of adjustment. And he said as as the wood, you know, as as it ages and dries and weather happens, things shrink and mm -hmm. and that will often happen where um, the you know things will shrink and the teeth start to mesh together when they hadn't done that before. So so anyway, I'm I'm excited to be able to repair my drum carter. I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do that maybe this week. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Before okay. it's gone too long and I've forgotten what he said. Yeah, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was very nice. He said, there's video, you know, there's a video I can look at um, or I can email him and he'll send me, you know, he'll send me the video link or I can email him and he can walk me through it with pictures. And I took pictures with my phone and took notes. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think I'll be in good shape to get that to get that done. Okay, good. All right. So, and then I did get a fleece, Marsha. Yes. As you knew I would, right? How could mm -hmm. I resist? Mm -hmm. um, I have been talking about a California red for a while, and I knew that there are California red sheep that regularly show there. And in fact, I watched the, the judging of the California red sheep um, one afternoon, I think maybe while you were in your class. I, I watched the the judging of these California red sheep. So I thought, oh, I'd like to get a California red fleece. And so I ended up buying some roving from Valley Oak Wool Mill. They had um, bumps of roving. And I stood and talked to Mark Hale for quite a while. It was really nice to talk to her. And then I um, I uh, bought quite a few bumps of interesting things at her at her booth but then i went over into the um fleece auction or not auction but the fleece show the sale mm -hmm. and looked around at the fleeces that were left on sunday um you know the the sh the sale starts on saturday afternoon after the judging and i did not mm -hmm. go in there right after the judging <laughs> <laughs> I waited until the next day and I thought, you know what, if anything good is left at a good price, I think I'll, I think mm -hmm. I'll get it. And there was a California red fleece and that was something I was interested in. And I saw it and then I thought, okay, well, I'm going to go look around the marketplace and, you know, do a little bit of last minute um, looking around. And then if it's still here, when I come back, I'll buy it. And it was still there. So I bought it. So I have a small, I think it's a four pound four and a half pounds, something like that, fleece, uh, mm -hmm. California red fleece. So that's a medium to medium to prickly mm -hmm. wool. I, I think the, the wool is actually medium, but one of the things that I learned from the fleece judging at one point is that it's the the variation in the fiber that makes you have that prickle factor in wool. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I, and so, um, California reds were bred. The guy who bred them was actually trying to breed a hair, a hair sheep. Oh, okay. Like the Barbados. He bred a Barbados to something else. And I, I, there's a link in the show notes to information about the breed. Um, but anyway, so they have, they have some variation in their in their wool which makes for a more prickly fleece than one that has a lot of consistency so you can have a medium corydale about the same micron count mm -hmm. and if every you know basically every fiber is the same it will feel softer than something with a similar micron count but there's a lot of variation you know some of them are 
coarser. Some of them are finer. And so, so it's not a soft fleece. Yeah. But it's interesting. Yeah. It's one mm-hmm. of those breeds that I, that I haven't spun. So I'm really interested in it. So, and then I bought um, a bump of Deboulet, which I had never, I don't think I'd even heard of it. Mm-hmm. Um, roving from um, the Black Sheep, the uh, Valley Oak Wool Mill. So I uh, have a little bit of something else that I've never spun before. Yeah, so I, I had a lot of fun. And then we should also say that on Saturday we had the meetup at the trailer. Um, yes. Which was really well, fun. Friday night we had dinner with Dagmar. She couldn't be there on yes. Saturday, so that yeah. was fun. And then, yeah, Saturday we had um, we had the meetup with the trailer at the trailer. And small um, small group of yeah. people. We had but fun. Kelly from um, Vashon Island was there, and um, Marianne, Marianne mm-hmm. and her friend Monica. Mm-hmm. So it was a nice group. We had a nice uh, dinner and. Well, it and was we, very hot. We spent, very hot. <laughs> yes. We spent a good portion of the time spinning um, in the shade of the barn mm-hmm. and kind of watching the very end of the, of, the, of the judging of the sheep, which was interesting. Mm-hmm. So uh, Danielle, Gracie B., she had messaged in Ravelry, and I didn't see it until, until too late, um, that she was working in the information booth. And it's funny because I did go to the information booth because that's where they were selling hats. Mm-hmm. But I didn't go there to buy a hat until uh, Sunday when she was gone. <laughs> so yeah. I, I never, I never ran into her. So yeah. maybe next yeah. time. Yes, and then I'm just gonna. So is that is that all we want to say mm-hmm. about black sheep? I'm just gonna add one last thing, and this is not about black sheep gathering, but um, on the way down, driving from Seattle to Albany, Oregon, uh, Kim and I stopped in Salem, Oregon. At, at the Willamette Heritage Center. And Kelly, I don't know if you remember this or not, but I, I had not heard of this. But when I took the train down in um, March to go to Stitches, mm-hmm. um, the train went right past this, oh. the Willamette Heritage, excuse me, the Willamette Heritage Center. And that's how I um, learned about it. So I we stopped there and it's basically, it's a uh, an old woolen mill. Um no longer uh, working. It hasn't, uh, I think that they closed up in the 70s, but mm-hmm. you can go through the whole building and see the whole process of, you know, making wool. And they made wool for Pendleton. They made wool for men's suits. They made blankets. They, um, and I, let me say it started in the 1880s and um, closed in the, in the 70s. Um, but they also made the wool for military uniforms and, um, so it's just really interesting to go to take a tour of that. And then they have three historic homes that they've moved into the site. So, and then they also, you can have lunch there and a full bar. Uh, not that we, we didn't have anything to drink cause we were driving, but if you were there <laughs> and you want to have a drink, you can have a drink, but it was just kind of fun to stop and see that. And uh, there's a link to the, um, the website. And then the gift shop is run by, uh, Pendleton Woolen Mills. So um, that's kind of fun. They have all kinds of, if people I'm sure know about the Pendleton Woolen Mills, but they have, they're they famous for their blankets and their wool shirts. And so that was really fun. Um, um, yeah, you got me there. a little cute little uh, notions mm-hmm. pouch. Yeah. That says Pendleton and, Woolen Mill. Oh. And there's also a, um, a yarn shop in there too called, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, it's like Teasel, something Teasel. I'll oh, look up yeah. the name and I'll put it. I'll put it in the um, in the show notes. Cool. Um, but we we went in there and walked around a little bit, but restrained ourselves because we knew we were going to the black sheep gathering. So, um, and also I literally need no yarn. So as we've <laughs> talked about forever. <laughs> so anyway, so should we talk projects? Yeah. So what do you want me to go first yeah. or? Mm-hmm. Okay. So the first thing I have to say is when I was walking Enzo uh, and listening to our last episode, I get to the part where I'm talking about the sweaters, my sweaters that I was going to put in a closet. And I just have to say to everybody, I apologize because (laughs) I was listening to myself getting stressed out and 
like, and having that feeling, you need to shut up, Marsha. <laughs> and I think I even got off the phone and called you and said, yes. oh, my God, <laughs> shut up about those sweaters. <laughs> and it's like, I, I had the same feeling I had when I listened back when I was talking about my basement. Yeah. Do you remember, like, <laughs> shut up about that basement. So I apologize to everybody <laughs> by talking about those sweaters because I was stressed out. I can only imagine what people were just like, oh, my, we cannot listen to this anymore about these sweaters. <laughs> anyway, so they're put away, and I'm not going to talk about them until I'm back on track. So, um, but on to more pleasant topics. I think I mentioned that I had cast on Happiness by Kyle Konecki, and I'm using the Yarn Snob Powerball. And... Um, I hesitate to say this, but I'm just going to, I have to be honest. <laughs> I think I'm getting out of my bad juju, but I did have a, and this is not the pattern. Mis- there's nothing wrong with the pattern. It was completely me reading the pattern. But what you do is you knit two inches of ribbing and then, um, then you knit stockinette till, uh, the back measures seven inches. And then you set that aside and you do the same for the front, except you only knit it five inches. And then the idea is you join those together. So you have like a, the back is a little bit longer than the front and you have an opening, um, like a side slit, I guess I should say. Mm-hmm. So I just cast on and I knit my ribbing, knit my seven inches, went to do now the front. And I realized that the ribbing is not a two by two ribbing. It's actually a two by two broken rib. I believe that's what it, so you do, you know, knit pearl, I mean, you knit two, pearl two. Yeah. And then on the, the, um, the wrong side. And then on the right side, you just knit. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I knit the, I left it, I set it aside, the back aside, and I debated what to do. And I realized, I think they do the broken rib. So it's not so stretchy. Yeah. If it's just a two by two rib, then it's, it might pull in too much. Yeah. And I learned from, remember we, the last episode (laughs) that if you say, I think it will be okay. If you say that, that means you should rip it out. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting, I was sitting there working on it and I said to myself, I think it will be okay. And I thought, nope, those, (laughs) that think is the word that is, says you need to rip it out. So I ripped it out. I've now re-knit everything and I've joined it and I've knit about three inches of the body. Nice. And I did it the correct way with that. I think, isn't that what you call a broken rib? Yeah. Where you, mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, I love this yarn. Um, it's appropriately, appropriately named happiness or I mean, um, the pattern is happiness, but what is the name of the colorway too? Oh, I don't have my band here, but I think the band, I think the yarn is called happiness. I, too. Think, I can't remember. I think you're right. Yeah. But it has like every color of the rainbow and it's very loud, but I, it's when you start just knitting it up because it's such, um, it's fingering weight yarn. It, I don't think it's crazy over the top loud, you know, did you, no, you saw it, me working yeah, on it. It's no, really going to be really nice. Yeah. It's just fantastic. I just really, I'm so happy knitting on this. I Happiness how- is a neutral, Marsha. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's funny. So many anyway. colors. I'm I'm stealing I'm stealing from Barb and Tracy who say acid oh, okay. green. Acid oh, yes. green it's is a, a neutral. It, it's a neutral, but I think yes. I uh, but I think you could you could make that same case for this because there are so many colors in it and and because it's fingering weight and it's like all over. Yeah, yeah, it's almost like a neutral. <laughs> okay, maybe that's the title of this episode. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, so I've been working on that, and then um, I've been spinning because, as we we know, we're all we're in the middle of our summer spin in. So and, I've been and tour still, de fleece too. Yes, yes, both. So um, I've been spinning. No doping. Um, no doping. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm going to say something, but every time I say something like this, I, it makes me sound like I'm a, a major alcoholic. But is if I have a drink while I'm spinning, is that considered doping? No, no. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> that um, would not be considered a performance enhancing drug. <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> anyway, I have been I've been continuing to spin that Manx Lawton. I, mm-hmm. And I have n- spun almost a pound. I have a two pound bag. And this is interesting, Kelly. I don't know. I've spun 15.2 ounces. Mm-hmm. And if I've counted it correctly, I have a 768 yards. Okay. Does that, and I, now I'm doing, is it woolen spun, you know, where you've taught me like you hold the fi- the fiber in your left hand or mm-hmm. like, and you're holding it like a baby bird, you know, and, and, and you try not to do that pinch an inch thing. Like you, the idea is like you said, baby bird in, in your left hand and a glass of wine in your right hand is what you told me. Right. So I, I'm not doing that all the time, but that's what I'm trying to do. So very light and open everything. Does it make sense that I have such a small amount of yard, yardage for a pound of fleece? Yeah, yeah. It it does. Okay. Yeah, because your your, I think your yarn is a little bit heavier than worsted weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. So I'm thinking, like, whatever. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it because it really depends on you know how much yardage I have. Mm-hmm. But um, whatever it is I make, I'm, I'm assuming I would do it on because you I've worked to make kind of a light airy yarn i want to knit it on needles that create a light airy fabric right too Mm -hmm. um so um okay anyway um i've been spinning on that uh spinning that and then as we talked about at the black sheep gathering i bought the blending board from celestial farms and i'll put a link here in the show notes and so i've been playing with the um the board and i when we were down one time, I don't remember if it was this time or when, um, at Knockers in the D stash room, I picked up a ball of roving. Um, and it's from uh company's Green Pastures. And it was kind of a lavender mm-hmm. color. And it's a Corydale Jacob, four ounces. And um I just took that ball and that's what I blended. I blended that with the uh, um the silk that um, uh, knit oh, that, at, um, that, that um, soft silk. data knitter Pat had mm-hmm. um, donated, and so soft silk. Yeah, I blended it with that and some um, alpaca um, locks that I think you had dyed in really bright acid colors, like mohair. yellow and mohair. Yeah. yeah. Um, um. So I blended with that, and so. It's been kind of fun, and so I've spun two skeins. Just I just plied them, you know, together, mm-hmm. two singles together, and um, but the blending board is really fun. I I have to work on my technique. I watched a lot of YouTube videos, and um, I think the, but I, anyway, let me just say I there's a bunch of ways you can take the the fiber off the board. One is you can roll it into a roll log, um, you know, which looks like a cigar kind of. Um, that's pretty easy to do. I watched the videos where they actually pull the um, fiber off through a diz to make roving. Mm-hmm. I cannot do that. I, it's not, it doesn't come off easily. I don't know. Um, it could be this f- um Fiber is kind of a, a sticky fiber, you know, it's mm-hmm. not with, it's clean. So it's not with lanolin, but just the fibers are kind of like hard to pull apart. You have to really draft yeah. it a lot. And so it could be that, I don't know. So I'm not doing, being very successful with the uh, pulling it off through the diz. Um, so it I might be to better some- to use longer fiber if you're going to be doing that. Oh, okay. Okay. Because usually when you pull things through a diz, it's, it's usually for combed I mean, mm. one of the things you that that it was designed for was for pulling comb top off of combs, and that's mm. usually longer, you know, the longer fibers. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm sure it would be easier with longer fibers. People probably do it with the shorter ones, and you just maybe need a little more practice, or okay, um, you know, maybe there's I'll... some tips and tricks that you can find somewhere. But but I would guess that using longer fiber would help. Mm. 
Yeah, this this fiber feels too jumbled up, kind of. Mm -hmm. to, and I know it's not really because it's been commercially processed into roving, but it feels... Yeah. Yeah, jumbled up, kind of. And mm -hmm. so it's... Uh, so I'll have to... I'm going to practice with some more. And then I did have a kind of a dark chocolate brown merino fleece that I pulled out and um, carded some of that and used on the blending board, too. And that was not... It was a bit more successful, mm -hmm. but not super successful. So, and then I, I have to watch some more videos and practice some more too, because I'm finding the, so when you take the mohair locks, you pretty much have to just take them. You have to use the, obviously, you know, you can't just put them on in their, their intact state. You have to use the flicker brush to brush them out. And then you have to separate them quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. Because, they don't blend. I mean, it's not like you're putting right. it through the carter, you know, so right. you have to, what I'm learning is you have to use really uh, well carded, well, yeah, well, well carded fiber. If it's, if it's um, something that you've dyed yourself, you have to, does that make sense what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, um, that makes sense. And well, and those locks are, are super old and sticky. They're very sticky. Yeah. 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 They're all kind of stuck together with. Mm -hmm. Well, and the other thing about them I think is it's, they're I think not it's the, well rinsed. No, I think it's the, like, I think a lot of them, there's like, it's like the dye or something. That's, there's like something sticky on them. I Like, yeah. I almost felt like it was the dye. Well, like, some of it is that I didn't wash the, uh, some of them were not even washed. You know, the mohair oh. was not even washed before I put it in the dye pot. Okay. I just threw a bunch of locks that I had left over into different dye pots. And oh, then okay. I also discovered in one of the things that I spun earlier this year, this during the summer spin in that I don't think I talked about um, the skein that I blended mohair into my Oxford fleece to use up the last of the Oxford. Mm -hmm. When I washed it, it really bled. So those mm. mohair locks that I gave you, they're mm -hmm. not well rinsed at all. So when you wash those skeins, you're going to probably, depending on how much of the mohair you used, you're going to find a lot of dye, um, okay. excess dye bleeding out. I mean, the colors okay. are really super saturated mm -hmm. and they stay pretty, you know, the color stays pretty saturated, but, but part of one of the side effects of, of having colors that saturated mm -hmm. is that you really need to rinse well when you're done. And I did not. I mean, mm -hmm. I th I died that probably close to 20 years ago. So it's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's my practice. So yeah, I'm yeah, not, so, to, yeah, it's totally, yeah. J but just That's be aware when you when you wash that, that there will mm -hmm. be more than likely there will be some bleeding of the dye. Okay. Okay. And in fact, um, the way I, when I washed that skein that I had, I used, because it was sticky, that Oxford fleece was kind of sticky still, and I needed to, I didn't get all the lanolin out of it. Um, I washed it with, you know, hot water just off the boil. Mm -hmm. And then I had the fleece, you know, the, the mohair locks bleeding color. And so some of the color that bled off actually attached to the white wool. And yeah, so I, I got more of a, I got more of a muted kind of over kind of an over dye wash mm -hmm. of color, which is not bad. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't dislike it. I was just kind of surprised the difference between my singles yeah. before washing. And then, you know, after I applied them and washed them, what my finished yarn looked like. And mm -hmm. it was, it was all the extra dye. So. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see if these, uh, you know, attach to the, yeah. um, 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 it's not a beautiful spin. It's very, um, because it was really, it actually, I would say, I would say it was kind of hard to spin because the, this, uh, Corydell Jacob mm -hmm. Perry that I got, as I say, it was very hard to pull apart and kind separate. Kind of compacted. You know, to, mm -hmm. It was hard to draft. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, the mohair locks, because I was trying to figure out, how to separate even though i used the flicker brush to separate them they're still really sticky so a lot of them it was still just like a clump on <laughs> yeah. the, so it's a it's not sublime it's you know it's a it's a process of learning right well so. it's kind of i mean it, that's it's more like spinning an art bat 
than yeah. spinning a yeah. processed fiber, right? A highly yeah. processed fiber. Yeah. yeah. Highly blended yeah. processed fiber. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's been interesting. Cool. So um, that's, that's it for projects for me. Oh, the only thing is, I would say is I am getting kind of tired of this Manx because uh, I've done a pound of two pounds. Yeah. So I think, Kelly, we were talking this morning. I think I'm the two braids that I bought at Eugene Textile mm-hmm. Center at Black Sheep. I think I'm going to start um, spinning those just because I, I need something different. <laughs> yeah. No, that's I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. They're fun. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Spinning a color braid is a good uh pellet cleanser for lots of natural colored wool. Yeah. And it's yeah. funny because I said I was going to buy colored braids. When I went to Black Sheep Gathering, I bought one and the rest mm-hmm. of what I bought natural colored wool. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, best laid plans. <laughs> I, hey, I'm happy with everything I got. Yeah, I'm very. I'm happy pleased. with what I got, and I think I exercised a lot of restraint mm-hmm, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't come home with a fleece, and they're mighty tempting. Oh yeah, and, you were um, ready to you were ready to split that one with me. Oh yeah, you were ready to have the woman who was also looking at it split it with me. Yeah, oh, I was. Yeah, no, <laughs> or with it's you. Like, <laughs> it's like something just comes over us, right? Yeah, and, but yeah. we have to have a we have to have a conversation with ourselves. So yeah. anyway, uh, a good thing before you go is just look at your stash. Just go mm-hmm. look at your stash the it's day true. before you leave, <laughs> and that is <laughs> very calm true. You down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, it gives so you Kelly, a- how about you and your projects? What's going on? So I think the last episode I had not quite finished those shorty socks. Well, those are finished mm-hmm. now. Out of that um, sort of reddish orange Mm -hmm. kind of a rusty orange color and a kind of a taupe gray that was called tomato and mink Mm -hmm. so it was some leftovers so i so uh, and a hand spun three ply so i made some shorty socks out of that so that yarn is now gone yay Mm -hmm. yeah Um, and then i i started during the trip i started and finished three hats Mm -hmm. um and this was out of the invictus yarn the yarn that I used for my niece's hat that had the fancy pom-pom on it. Oh, right. Yeah. And then I had another one. So that was leftovers. And then I had a full skein of uh, purple variegated, um, also from Invictus Yarns. And so I I used those two and made three hats. So one, so uh, the purple is gone. The pink, I still have a little bit of. A little bit of that pink left, um, so that was good. Use some use some leftovers, and then I had two flat mother bears that weren't quite finished. Mm-hmm. I was able to stuff and finish those on the trip, and then I made a third one. Again, more scraps gone. Yay! Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and then I had planned with the Columbia fleece that I was carding and adding silk to. You know, blending with silk. I had planned to do a three ply and to um, spin all the singles first before I start applying. Mm-hmm. But then I wanted to spin that braid that I got. Mm-hmm. So I had to make some room on bobbins. And so I, I actually plied I actually plied off some of the uh, Columbia silk into a skein. Which mm-hmm. has not been washed yet. I'm smelling it. it smells good. Um, <laughs> it's not been washed yet. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'll wash that today. Um, I still have quite a bit on the two of the bobbins, but one of the bobbins was smaller, and so I emptied off that bobbin so I could spin the the braid. So that project is ongoing. I car. I uh. I picked some locks yesterday. Picked some of that fiber yesterday, so I can card the rest of it. I maybe have about. I want to say I have maybe eight ounces left of the Columbia, mm-hmm. and it's 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 probably the worst eight ounces because you know when you when you reach in and grab it, you try to grab a piece that looks like it doesn't have as much mm-hmm. vegetable matter in it, or it looks like mm-hmm. it has nice locks that are easy to pull apart and be longer. So I'm kind of to the dregs of mm-hmm. that fleece, um, and I'm ready to be done with it. It's nice. It's a nice fleece, though. It, I wish it didn't have so many stickers in it, but um, but it is a really nice fleece. Very soft compared to mm-hmm. there was a Columbia fleece at the 
um, the wool sale or the wool show that I was looking at and, you know, touching and the hand of that one was not nearly as nice as this one, mm -hmm. but, but this one has a lot more, a lot more vegetable matter in it. So, mm -hmm. but I'm going to finish that up. That'll be, um, a fleece gone. So my Oxford is gone, finished up in the skeins I was talking about where the, where the mohair bled. Mm hmm. And this Columbia will be gone soon when I get this Columbia, uh, Columbia and silk blend, you know, finish carding and spinning that. So that'll be nice. You can see I have a theme, right? Mm hmm. I'm finishing up all the things that are where I have leftovers, little bits mm -hmm. of leftovers. So mm -hmm. I don't know what my next spin will be for the summer spin in once I finish the Columbia. I don't know what it will be. Maybe I'll start on the maybe I'll start on the California red. Or yeah. I have <laughs> I have a couple of washed. I have a wash. I say you could just Shetland. go out to the you could just garage. go out to your garage, you know. Yes. I have a wash Shetland. I have still a lot of that targy lamb, the brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um actually carded. So I could blend that with some, al I have some alpaca that I was thinking of blending it with. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but it's fun <laughs> to think about it. So, but those are my projects. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's the extent of what I've been doing. Not a lot of knitting um, or crochet other than just the hats and the bears. Mm -hmm. And even that's not really a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. So mostly spinning on this trip. So since we're talking about all the spinning, we just have to remind people that in case you don't know by now, <laughs> the, um, the summer spin-in continues mm -hmm. uh, until September 5th. And if you are on Instagram, you can use the hashtag summer spin in 2022. And mm -hmm. um, we already have a prize. We have prizes. a few prizes um, donated yes. from besides, besides some fibery, surprise prizes that we'll have mm -hmm. um, when it comes time to pull prizes. We have some prizes that were donated from listeners. So I want to mm -hmm. send out a big thank you to Dagmar um, and also to Kathy Straight Fork for, mm -hmm. for providing prizes. Um, Dagmar brought us a, a little um, a hat kit made out of Shibui, really nice Shibui yarn. Mm -hmm. Um, hat kit that she donated and then Kathy um, sent me a message and said she'd like to donate a an alpaca um, sample fiber set so four different types four different colors mm -hmm. of alpaca fiber um, prepared alpaca fiber to spin and then another prize a pint of maple syrup Kathy mm -hmm. um, and her husband make syrup every spring and it's kind of fun to to uh, see her messages about, you know, all the, all the work that goes into making mm -hmm. maple syrup. So she has very generously donated a pint of maple syrup from, very nice. from her yeah. trees for a prize. So, so yeah, nice. thank you. So there's lots of time and um, the uh, group on Ravelry is very active. Um, yeah, lots of comments and updates what people are doing. So that's been fun and nice pictures. Um, mm -hmm. And then um, really interesting. One of our listeners, Kristen uh, Kabang, I think I'm saying that right is her username. She has been uh, cleaning fleeces uh, using the fermentation process. And that's been really interesting to see. Um, yeah, that what, how they're coming out. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Really, really interesting. So that's kind of fun to see what she's been doing. Um, and did you read why she's doing doing the fermentation process? Why she started doing it this way? I think I she's you... she doesn't have a lot of space to wash. Is that right? Yeah, she lives in a. I believe she lives in a, a condo, and the yeah, there's not. She's not able to use that much water or have that much space. So she's mm -hmm. trying this fermentation, and says they're coming out beautifully. So it's been really interesting to see that too. So. Yeah, that's cool. Mm. I I would like to actually try that someday. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I have put fleece in a bucket and just, you know, not paid attention to it for a while, but I haven't mm. done the actual um cuz I think you're supposed to keep it covered and uh and I haven't done that. Yeah. 
So yeah. anyway, so um, yeah, so join in. Right? So well, it was really fun seeing you because I well I saw you. It's funny because I saw you, uh, March, mm-hmm. April, mm-hmm. <laughs> June. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have plans to see you for the rest of the summer, but um, I don't know. That may be change. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows what will happen? Yeah. So. Well, our next uh-huh. planned trailer event is the um, the boot camp, vintage trailer boot camp in August. Mm-hmm. So that'll be fun. But but for right now, the trailer is cleaned and buttoned up in its cover. So. Yes, I saw the picture of it mm-hmm. on um, Instagram, and it looks like a loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> it's all wrapped up. I said well, to Robert, this is not very attractive. And he said, well, it's not supposed to be attractive. So. Well, and what I wanted to ask you is it fits so perfectly. Is it custom made for the trailer? No. No, it just oh. has all these wrapping wrapping oh, okay. points and ties and stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, of course, yeah. Robert, you know, is picky about things so i'm sure he did it exactly the way it was supposed to go and mm-hmm. you know like a hospital corners on a bed or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so then when it's wrapped like that can you easily get into it no though, if you Mm-mm. oh okay not at all <laughs> there's not like a like a, a a fly like on a you know a, a zippered thing on yeah. like on a tent that you can get into the door no or something. the so other yeah. trailer had a place where you could unzip the door but even that you had to be really careful because mm-hmm. the top of the door is sharp mm-hmm. and so you could rip the the cover okay if you're not okay. careful so we never we never went in the trailer when it was covered um, but this one i don't think there's a way to go inside when it's covered so you just have okay. to make sure you take everything out that you mean mm-hmm. to have out of the trailer. So hopefully we'll, we're, we're thinking about taking another trip sometime in July, a short trip. Um, mm-hmm. And then, the, and then we have the trip plan, the planned one in August. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, summer vacation. Right. I hope everyone is, everyone in the Northern hemisphere is enjoying their summer vacation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and everybody in the Southern hemisphere is enjoying their winter. Yes. Knitting and sitting by the fire. Yeah. (laughs) All right, Kelly. Um, We'll talk in two weeks. All right. Hopefully we'll stay on track and we'll talk in two weeks. (laughs) Right, exactly. (laughs) All righty. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening. To subscribe to the podcast, visit 2usefiberadventures.com. Join us on our adventures on Ravelry and Instagram. I am Better in Motion, and Kelly is 100 Projects. Until next time, we're the two yous doing doing our our part part for World Fleece. Fleece.